Sorry about that, guys. Hi, and welcome to Sadie's Spincraft. Today is a live unboxing. I shall wait until everybody arrives, or at least some people. Good morning, Chris. I've got my coffee too. We're all ready to go. We have, are you ready? A nice big box from World of Wool to unbox lots of new fibers and also something to add for the giveaway on the first saturday of september let me just check my calendar so that we can all get ready for the jammer party it will be the 5th of september no the 4th of september and that will be the pajama party. So, good morning, Hera. How are you, my darling? We're going to open it. So, just. No, let's try the other side. One side don't go more than the other. So that's what I see, which is same as you. Good morning, Jennifer. And how are we? So I'm going to start. Not even sure what that is. Oh, it's that. Right. <laughs> So we're going to start with this. This will be for a giveaway during the um, pajama party, which is a breed study. And in this breed study, we have 18.5 micron merino, 23 micron merino, blue face Leicester, Shetland, Jacob, Devon, Swaledale and Herdwick. So they will be for, well, one of the prizes on the 4th of September. So that's one. Then there is this Shimmering Cascade, and this is Corriedale and Oh my word, that is gorgeous. Corriedale and Firestar, uh, which is super bright nylon or Trillabon, whatever they call it. I don't know. But that is so pretty. I am needing serious advice from y'all. It can wait till your unboxing is complete. Okay. That is absolutely fine. We do good with advice. And we do good with helping each other. So I forgot to mention, this big box has been possible because of the wonderful people who have donated to my PayPal and bought me a coffee. So Chris, thank you. Sarah from Sarah Sparkles, thank you. Jules Murray, thank you. And come on, Sadie, I think there was another one. I'll remember the name and I'll let you know. I will thank said person. <laughs> so that was another one. Then there were this Lucky Dip and it's a luxury blends one. So it's not in a pretty bag. Right, that feels like Merino. And it looks like mulberry silk. So I don't know if you can see that sheen running through. That reminds me of mulberry silk. Now I'm going to show you Tussa silk. Now the Tussa silk is more of a creamy gold colour. And that's how I tell the difference. Uh, blah, 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 blah. 
Mulberry silk is more soft and tussa silk is not as soft, but do you know, it still feels good. It's still silk. It's still good. That blue is good, isn't it? So I do believe they are both merino, but one's got tussa silk and one's got um, mulberry silk. It's just... That looks like one of the fairy tale ones. So that'll be merino and bamboo. See, I actually looked into what went into them so that I could. I'm not too keen on that. I know what they're probably doing is using uh, waste from the end, but they could actually put waste rather than. World of Wool does deliver outside the UK, yes. And it is in the UK. This one looks like and feels like Blue Face Leicester. So I'd say oatmeal blue blue face Leicester with mulberry and tussa silk because it's got white and golden i don't know if you can see it as well as me but can you see the goldy color and then the no that side the white so that's got both tussa silk and mulberry silk i do believe and it feels like bfl That looks like Jacobs and Mulberry Silk. <laughs> I like that. Don't like that. See, even though I keep buying from World of Wool, I do like World of Wool, don't get me wrong. But it's like, do you have to give me waste? I know you want to make sure you're selling, but say that it's waste, you know, just like what I've bought with the vegan lap waste. I know it's waste. This is um, a luxury blends lucky dip. So you get five different types or six different types. That does feel like Jacobs and it looks like mulberry silk. And then last but not least, oh, that's soft. I'm going with alpaca because it doesn't feel like sheep. That's very nice. So I do believe in that one. Good morning, love to crochet. <laughs> Thank you. So I do believe with that one, I've got alpaca, Jacobs and mulberry silk. BFL, oatmeal with mulberry and tussa silk. Merino and bamboo. These are classed as luxury blends. That one's merino and mulberry silk. And that one is merino and tussa silk. And I do believe that one is called cappuccino or latte. I'm not sure which. Because I went hunting for stuff. <laughs> Go on, get in. I don't even know the fast I'm in. So that was the luxury blends. Then I ordered some white Perrindale just so that I can do some dyeing. I do love my Perrindale. Um, and I got some white and not white Andes. This one 
It's limited edition stricken Andes. It's not quite white. It's got little flecks of brown going through. It's really pretty. I wouldn't say it's the softest I've felt, but I've never used Andes before, so it's it's new to me. I shall do a bit of research into the Andes wool and let you all know. So I had those two from the last unboxing, which is the white and the grey. But this one were to go in between. So I've got the grey, the stricken, I don't know why it's called stricken, and then the white. So I'll try and do a set. Or maybe not, I might just blend it. We don't know yet. Right, this is the vegan botany lap waste. See, this I expect because it says waste. Let's have a look in it. I'm not, by the looks of this, I'm not going to enjoy it. Um, looks like it's got flax in it. I don't do flax. I can't open the goddamn bag. Why? Why? I'm going to have to cut it open. Where's my scissors? Yes, we've got flax. I don't like flax and that looks like it's been wet and now it's knackered. Look at the state of that. Yes, it may be waste, but don't give someone something that should be in the bin. Ew. I think the majority of this is flax, just in different colours. I don't know what that is. That's bamboo, so we like bamboo, so I'm going to take the bamboo out. Wow. <laughs> so I do like bamboo, but I'm going to have to clean it up because it's got flax all over it. I hate flax. Can't stand the stuff. Um, got some more bamboo there. I think I should have looked into the botany waste a bit more. <coughs> I don't remember it mentioning flax. Right, so I'll keep <laughs> the bamboo. If anybody likes flax to spin linen, let me know. I don't like it. Yes, a coffee flavour. That's what uh, we're in. That That's what they were called. Why do they tie so snugly? Where do they think it's got? I don't know. I honestly don't know because it's only what Huddersfield, which is about 60 mile away. I was watching an Irishman spinning flax at a museum yesterday. Now I know the origin of a spinster. Yes. Yes, a spinster is um, a spinner woman. And I can't remember the rest of it. But yeah, this is flax. I don't like flax. Flax is gross. So I don't think I'll be starting a vegan line if I've got to use flax. I'm sorry to say. Um, look at that. Ew. Get off. If you want to, if you're in the UK and you'd like to try spinning flax, let me know. I have loads that you can have because I won't touch this. I won't blend it with anything because to me, flax should not be blended with uh, anything. Because you, what would you use? Well, I can't really return it. Uh, love to crochet because I want the bamboo out of it. I can't really send that back without that in. So I'd rather keep the bamboo. 
because I'm that way out. Yeah. <laughs> Only problem is I'm going to have to take all that flax off it all. But I don't mind. So what I'm going to do is get this tissue paper, put that bamboo inside there so I know to keep it. Like I say, if anyone's in the UK, let me know. You can have it. Um, I just don't like the texture, Chris. It's nothing to do with hard to spin. Um, I don't like the fact my hands have got to be wet to be able to set the twist as it's twisting. I also don't like the feel of it. It's just horrible. It's like a really, really coarse sheep's wool. I can't even stand feel of it, let alone. No, no. But like I say, if I'd have realised it was flax, I wouldn't. You'll give the flax a go, Jen. Sound as pound, I'll send it to you. You can have it. Right. What else have we got? What else have we got? Ooh, we've got Shetland in woodpecker colour. Let's get it out. A bit of Shetland, look. Oh, look at that. It's actually greener than it's showing up on the screen. It's more like a really deep turquoise. Oh, it's pretty. It is really pretty. So we've got some Shetland to either spin on its own or blend. I use flax thread for embroidery, and yes, he was using water. Yeah, now you understand. Yeah, I just... I'm a princess when it comes to my hands, I'm sorry to say. Anything that's slight, well, coarser than a 34, 35 micron, I get a bit, ew. To be fair, anything under that, I'm like, yay. You have to go. All right then, sweetheart, I'll see you later on. And I love you lots. And big hugs and I hope you feel better soon, my lovely hugger. Right, what else have we got? Oh, yeah. Right, I'll get that out last. This one is a glitzy raspberry. This is just like gorgeous. Look at that sparkle going through that. Mm -mm -mm. That is so pretty. I love it. So, yeah, I'm just not a flax fan. It's meh. If I remember, let me just, I didn't even think then. <laughs> That's Merino. Merino and Trillabon. And it's called Trillabon because of the amount of colours that go through it. Um, but it's basically... Uh, Nylon. Trillabon nylon. I can never say it. I'm saying it wrong. I know I am. But it's okay. We get through it. <laughs> this one is Shetland in the colour wave. So, oh, that is a pretty blue and it is showing up true to the colour on camera. Pretty. So that Shetland and that Shetland may end up being Rolex, tooth horned. The raspberry is very pretty, I agree. I bet it's because it has three side sand reflects light. Maybe it could be right there. I know what you meant, sweetheart. Side sand. Right, what's this one? Another Falkland top. I got another Falkland so that we can test uh, some dyeing because I've never dyed Falkland before. So we've got some Falkland to dye. <coughs> what's this? 
Oh, 200 grams of super fine merino. So they will be getting that 200 gram will get dyed up and I'll strip it into 25 gram bits and then I'm going to make I'll show you anyway when it comes to doing it because it's too hard to explain. <laughs> what is this? Oh, white Falkland Merino top. So this is a white Merino, which is from the Falklands. I don't know what the difference is from Falkland Merino to English Merino to Australian Merino. I thought a sheep were a sheep. It feels like merino. I don't know what the difference is other than that it's coming from the Falklands. So it don't feel any finer than the super fine merino or any finer than normal merino. Oh, what's this? Oh, yes, it's more of a grey. I got the grey um, Andes because I wanted to try some bright colours on them. I use a polyester quilting thread that does that. It's pretty, isn't it? Oh, they have passports. Is that why you get different, like, Australian, Falkland, English? Well, there you go, Chris. I never knew that. So with this grey Andes, I am going to over-dye it. Um, I want to dye it with bright, hot fuchsia. Uh, Kelly Green, the brightest of bright that you can find. It's a joke. Well, you could be right, though. That's the thing, Chris, because all animals, even horses and cows, goats, they all have their own passport. Um, and that's what the tags in their ears are for. So you could be right. I never actually thought of the passport thing. And we're getting down to the last three. I'll save the best till last. So we've got some wool nets in mulberry colour. So these are for doing um, textured bats and whatnot so that I can make a tweed for myself. <laughs> I, did fall, I did fall for that. You're right, Jen. But like I said, all animals, if they've got a tag, in the rear that is their passport so <laughs> and i've got ash so we've got these two colored nets i will get more colors because these will last forever no i've never made nets um to be fair i don't know if i could be bothered and that's just because I'd have to sit and pick it all out, whereas they have a machine to do it and I can't be bothered. So I'll buy it machine made. <laughs> I will get more colours, like I said, because this will last a while, just to make um, bats that have a textured or raw lags that are textured, and I won't use a lot. It'd just be enough to put little bits through it. And last but not least, I needed to get it because we need to find out what they all are. We have the Curious Collection. We have Himalayan Nettle Mint. So, Mint, Himalayan Nettle, Rose, Pearl, Pineapple, Banana, Milk, and Corn. And Geo Corn. Well, there we go. Let's open it and let's have a feel. Let's have a feel. Oh, you'll be seeing me use them, Chris, don't you worry. So, let's start in order and keep it in order. The Himalayan Nettle. It's very... 
short staple because we can pull it out without even opening it up so short staple it feels a bit softer than the flax i'm not sure i'm too keen on nettle but it's a luxury fiber we'll have a gander hi belinda nips are inter interesting they get everywhere when spinning them well you see it depends i've had nips it depends if it's blended into the fibers properly so that it can get caught and spinning and stay where it's meant to stay but you can also have them go everywhere so you're right there so we'll keep the nettle there so we know this one is mint oh now that feels a lot nicer it's a bit more silky more bamboo-ish is the nettle i'm liking that one then there is rose oh i like rose i like rose see between those two in feel wise i'd say they're all right that they're, they're good they remind me of bamboo and silk i bought this pack after watching your last wow haul oh thank you belinda mint is there a fragrance i don't know let's Oh, I've got fibres up my nose now. No, there's no, there's no fragrance to the rose anyway. <laughs> Why did I do that? Right, so pearl. <coughs> oh my God, that's softer than the rose and the mint. No, it can't got a smell. But that's pearl oh my word that is just ooh, squishy i like it i like that oh it's all right chris i should have known better than to stick it up my nose <laughs> and next we have a banana I feel like a minion banana that feels nice i like the feel of banana i do like the feel of banana Pineapple. Oh my God. I'm hoping that's a bit of pineapple. If not, I've got wood in it. Do you know, I'm sure sometimes they just chuck these on the floor. Oh, it's all right. They're going into a, a big pack. So that's the pineapple. It does feel nice. Sorry about that. Time for a good sneeze. Uh, probably, if it comes out. Ooh, milk. Let's have a look. Milk. Ooh. Ooh, I like milk. So I like everything so far, bar from nettle. Didn't like the nettle. What's this one? Calm. It's soft, but that feels more like nylon. It's even got the squeak of nylon. Where's me? Can you hear that? Can you hear that? I don't even know where my microphone is. I'm trying to. Can you hear that squeak from it? That's horrible. Maybe it's there. That is, I don't like the corn. The corn and the nettle, I'm not too keen on. But that is horrible. So I'll be using that as a nylon, I reckon. That, yeah, I'm not, I'm not one for that. I don't like that at all. It, see, you don't hear the uh, milk. I wonder if you can hear the nettle. Mm, the, the nettle's got a 
a crunchy, crunchy sound to it. I don't lay stuff all over my hands. I've got fairy palms. That's not good, is it? It's what boys get. <laughs> it is like fingernails on a chalkboard, you're right, Belinda. It's not nice at all. Right, that one's banana. So I'm putting them back in order so I know which is which. That one's pineapple. That one's rose. That one's pearl. That one's nettle, because I don't like it. And that one's mint. So yeah, it's going to write weird. That weird thing, yeah. I don't like that corn. It's gross. It's gross. What an unboxing. Hilarious. Well, I do try. I do try. Halo hands. Yes. It was definitely a, a furry palm. <laughs> Hi, Petra. You're up too early. I wanted to say good morning. That is absolutely fine. Good morning to you, my beautiful friend. So we've established I don't like corn fibre or nettle fibre. Someone else might. Someone else might. I don't. We've figured out what's in the lucky dip, sort of. We've also discovered that the vegan botany lap waste bag is all flax. I don't like flax. So that's going to Jen. Our Jen will we'll give you that. I'll get Chris to drop me off round at yours. Yep, yeah, maybe it is called, that's why it's called Curious. The Curious Collection. <laughs> I didn't like that squeaky one. <laughs> We've got nets. We will be getting more. I've kept the bamboo out of the vegan botany lap thing in my bob. Gonna have to sort that out, I reckon. So I need a bag for that. But I'll just put it in like that for now. We've got one prize ready for the Saturday pyjama party on the 4th of September. How do you like working with... I love bamboo. Absolutely love bamboo. It's one of my favourites, even over silk. I just... It's something I've managed to be able to work with right from the beginning. And I just... I love it. Uh, I'll show them pretty ones off again because they're just pretty. I like them. You like? Sorry, I'm just getting stuff out. So we've got the Andes again. So we did the Andes, didn't we? And we've got lots of grey. Fab unboxing. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Just let me know when you're coming. I will do, sweetheart. It'll probably be weekend because um, Chris is working all week. Uh, we've got Perrindale that needs dyeing. We've got Merino that needs that. So we've got some dyeing videos coming up. I might even do live dyes um, just because I can and then do an update on what it looks like when it's finished. Have you ever worked with milk fibre? No, that's in there and that's new and I can't wait to try it. The milk feels, oh, heavenly. The only ones so far that I'm not impressed with are the corn because it feel, it squeaks and it sounds like uh, nylon. And the nettle, didn't like that. So, yeah, can't wait to try the milk though. That sounds and feels amazing. Live dyes are fun. They are fun because 
I let you lot take over when it's live, Diane. So, it's a fair box. How the hell did they manage to fit it all in? That out of the colours. Oh, I can't say that actually because it. I do like my Shetlands. I like them. They'll make nice Rolags with added uh, sparkle. Flax is. Ugh, I don't like it. Um. Good morning, Izila. I, I, do you know I always get, I I can't say your name properly. Can I just call you Isla? <laughs> I feel so cheeky. I just struggle. Tell you what, I'll call you Graham. But these two sexy, sexy fibers are my favorite. These, I reckon, will look good together as Rolex. What do you reckon? Pink and blue Rolex. That could be a session for us all. I won't need to add any sparkle because it's already got it in. So it'd be quicker and we could get loads med. What do you reckon? We can do a live making Rolex again, can't we? Because we do like us Rolex. What's that one? That's raspberry. So it needs to go in that So, that is <laughs> the longest unboxing I've ever done. And that's what it all looks like. And then the crappy flax. Ew. <laughs> There's loads of people out there that love flax, absolutely love it. I'm just not one of them people. I'm really not. I will be honest with you. Many people out there absolutely love them. Um, and to say the vegan botany lap waist for 500 grams for £9.60. I'd say I'm happy with my bamboo out of it. <laughs> Oh, the Falkland top was only £1.80. So that's not bad. So, yeah, all together with the shipping, I spent £52.92p. Oh, I'm not going anywhere just yet, Chris. You, we, we said we were answering questions and talking and whatnot, so don't worry about it. Let's, let's bring you a bit closer, stretch my legs. I sat and spun all day Saturday, wrenched my lower back, was sitting on my portable folding chair as this happened to any of you. Right. Um, are you sitting properly? You, when you're sitting, you do not want to be slumped. You need to keep your back straight um, and keep, try and keep your elbows to your sides so you're not straining your shoulders or your back so you do need to sit so that your back's straight and if you can sit back so that your uh the back of your chair is actually touching your back and then you're straight and you can just spin um it's same with the drop spindle to be fair you don't hold your elbow up here when spinning. Your elbow must always be in. So then you're not straining your shoulder or your back. But yes, it has happened to me before when I sat and span for 12 hours straight for four days in a row. So it was 12, 24, 48 hours altogether over four days I sat and span. And by the end of it, yes, my hips, my back, my shoulders, the lot were hurting. So, yeah. So if you sit slumped forward, uh, so you, you can be sat up, then you just, all you do is relaxing your spine. If you relax your spine, you've not got a good 
posture for spinning. Ah, I think I slumped a lot. I know I leaned back as the back is quite angled. Right, you might need a different chair then, Chris. Good morning, Denny. I already have back problems, so going from the nano for the nano already use drop spindles. Yes. If electric spinning wheel is what works for you, Jen, then go for it because don't get me wrong, with a double treadle, you're fair using your legs and it does keep you going. Whereas a single treadle, it's a lot slower, a lot more relaxed and it's just one of those you know you've got to figure out what works for you what the best posture for spinning is for you and it's a double treadle yes you'll feel the strain more i find with a double treadle uh gwen i've had no problems with gwen but the second i got lance and the apprentice it's been i've had a few few extra problems with my hips until i found my right chair to spin from for um the apprentice and same for lance i have to have a certain chair and i've actually got two different chairs now because they're what works best for those wheels what time is it here sweetheart it's 20 to 12 in the morning so 11 40 well 11 41 who am i to pick on a minute <laughs> oh what works for me is watching sadie spin oh bless you denny you little cutie pie i have feet problems as well as my back wouldn't be able to treadle no um so i'd say just go for either the nano or the um eel wheel six the six is bigger you can fit on 100 grams whereas the nano is just a 25 gram to a 50 gram mini thing um if you're wanting to get full skins jen i suggest the eel wheel 6.0 i am saving up for one she's a queen oh thank you <laughs> Susan. oh good i don't know why i go between calling you tank and susan it doesn't matter denny it doesn't matter <laughs> right my, my coffee's gonna be cold so excuse the face i'm gonna pull because i don't do cold coffee but i don't waste it either How do people drink cold coffee? Like frappuccinos and stuff. It's just gross. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Petra. you got to get dressed at some point. It's weekday. We have to get dressed on a weekday. <laughs> Sorry about that face. I don't do cold coffee. Jenny's just chatting away to Susan. Oh, I love to crochet. So, what a live that has been. Sorry, I'm just daughter's messaging me. Let's see what she's got to say. You will have to come to me. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're all on about coffee, aren't you? 
Yeah, cold coffee's just wrong. It's wrong. Yeah, I did. I did gulp it. Hi, Lana. So nice to have you join us. Live in Louisiana, where it's hot as blazes, and you love cold coffee. No, I don't. No, iced coffee. It's just, ooh, no, I'm sorry. It's just wrong. I don't like cold coffee, but iced coffee is different. Really? I've never wanted to try it simply because it sounds gross. Sorry, I'm still answering daughter. She's a pain in my bum. Right, where were I? How many yards can you spin out of eight ounce on an eel wheel six? Right, eight ounces, two, about 224 gram. You probably wouldn't fit eight ounce on. You'd probably get away with four ounce, which is 114 grams ish. And the yards all depends on how fine you spin it, what's what weight you're after. So mm -hmm. it's a difficult one to answer, is that? You love cold coffee as well as hot black with no sugar. Ew, Jen. Ew. <laughs> I am going to pop off and get more coffee and then do a live myself. Not a problem, Petra. I'll be finishing here shortly. So we'll all come over and do a Sadie raid over at yours on Petra's happy place. <laughs> Kids are so much fun. Uh, glad all mine are out of the house. Yeah, I've got Hunter downstairs. I'm glad all mine have gone as well. In New England, we have a saying that we will drink iced coffee year round, and we do. Oh, Jennifer, oh my, black coffee, and I don't mix. Less weight than two plied. Right, if you were to do less weight, Two ply. Hundred grams. I'd say you're getting about six hundred yards, possibly, or a bit less, depending on how fine you spin. Uh because lace weight is you can get super fine lace weight, which uh, looks more like cotton thread. And then you can get Obviously, it gets slightly bigger until it goes into fingering weight. So, I'd say somewhere between 450 and 600 yards. Maybe. Don't quote me on that because unless, until I've done it, I couldn't tell you because I don't have an ear wheel six. I don't have the nano, but I do have other wheels. I've now got five, six, six wheels. It's getting a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit of an obsession. Oh, I don't, oh, pardon me. Oh, I don't have that uh, wheel. I need to buy it. Well, no, I don't. I technically don't need it, but I do. This way is so pretty. I have some I need to figure out what to do with. Right. With lace weight, Denny, I find um, don't try and go for your smaller hooks or your smaller uh, needles. Work with it as a DK and you get a lovely netted pattern if you do a shawl. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, I'm trying to figure out how much I need to be able to end up with 400 to 450 yards of sock yarn. Mm, now, Lorna, um, I tend to spin DK 
mm, sock it I can do as a single but not as a two ply and that's just because of how I prefer to do stuff um I'd say get 12 ounce just to be on the safe side and I'd say you'd have plenty and some left over after you've spun it if that helps what what wheels do I have right well that's going to be a surprise I shall show you all my wheels once I have them all in the attic um because there's two in the cellar that don't work then there's Gwen then there's Lance then there's the apprentice and then there's a nano so i actually have six wheels now oh <laughs> i have tried to figure this out yeah um do you want it socks if so what pattern do you no i don't um i am waiting to get some proper needles the only thing that i knit so far is shawls <laughs> so I knit shawls and I'm part way through a scarf that's got pretty patterns in I don't know if you can see the pretty the patterns in there but there is a pattern I stretch it can you see it no yeah there is a pattern there oh, if I do it like that yay um, so I do do that. Uh, I do do a bit of crochet, but I do need to figure out how to make socks. I want to make socks. So when I figure out a pattern, Denny, I'll, I'll let you know, sweetheart. It is hard trying to figure out. I just tend to spin and work with it. The person that you need, who is the mathematician, who sits and works everything out, who is just fantastic and she'll tell you about the history of everything, is Evie from Gillian Eve. She's just amazing. I love her. I love her to bits. Um, she can probably answer your questions a lot better than I can. Uh, so I've got behind on chat. Oh, God, I can't wait. That's about the wheels. So, yeah, I'll show the wheels. Um, and I figured eight ounce, and then it moved up, is too little, but 16 was way overkill. So, maybe try 18 then. I mean, 18, 12. Been watching Sadie for years. I've watched her wheel progression. You have. You have. You Do you remember? You will remember actually seeing Jack Rabbit, which is the small stand up castle wheel. I called him Jack Rabbit because when I treadled on him, he went like the clappers and it was a flax wheel. So it was really quick and it pulled out my hands and I'm like this and I was spinning 10,000 dozen. It was cool. I love Jack Rabbit, but it was just too quick and I couldn't perfect what I wanted to perfect with Jack Rabbit. So I just went with it. <laughs> Uh, da, da. I just purchased a tore up pattern so it won't be an utter surprise when I run out of yarn. <laughs> That's a clever, clever way of doing it, Chris. At least then you can stop at ankle and say that you were meant to. <laughs> Evie is amazing. You're right, she is. KB Fibers has a tutorial. I'll watch hers. Ooh, I'm going to have to have a gander at KB Fibers. Love Evie. Yeah, Evie is amazing. You don't know Evie? Oh, you'll have to go and watch Evie. Evie's amazing, Denny. Honestly, she's a little star. She does weaving. She does knitting. She doesn't do much crochet because she's not a crochet. She, she doesn't do much. She does edging. But what she does do and what she does make is just, amazing i wanted to swear then but you know jack rabbit he was a just amazing it was quick it was fun <laughs> i can't seem to even get 300 yards out of eight ounce 
I keep trying. I'm spinning finer and finer, but it's one of those things, uh, Chris. You need to also figure out how much your bobbins take. Um, because if I put a full hundred gram on a bobbin, depending on how fine I have spun it. To depending on how full my bobbin is. If I spin it, say, going for DK Aram weight for when I apply it, I can fill my bobbin. When I'm doing lace weight, it 100 gram just fills half the bobbin. So it's, oh, not quite half, but about three quarters. So the thicker you spin, the more bobbin space you use up. So you could end up using three, four bobbins for eight ounce. But if you were to do it lace weight, you could end up using two to three bobbins. I hope I'm making sense. I never feel like I'm making sense. Lorna, it takes time with anyone. It does. I agree, Denny. I'm. I've been spinning now nearly three years and I'm still not, I wouldn't say perfect, but I love what I can create. And that's, that's just it for me. I just love to create. So it's now time to go over to Patriot's Happy Place. I'm going to get some dinner because it's five to 12. I'm hoping to be back within the next couple of hours. I will do a short video to let you know if I'm coming back. I want to. I want to do some more Rolag making, I think. And we might even go sit up in the messy attic that I haven't done anything to since last time I spoke to you because I've just... Uh, Uh, sorry, I started reading. <laughs> yeah, I've done nothing to the attic because on this weekend, I, I went to Diggleland with Hunter. We gutted the house so that when it comes to this week, I can concentrate on painting. Yeah, Patriot's Place on YouTube. So you need to go to Patriot's Happy Place on YouTube and go over and say... Sadie Red, because I'm going to. So I love you all very much. I will do a short video to tell you if I'm going live after my dinner. I'll let you know. I spin fine enough now that four rounds fills three quarters of a bobbin. Yeah. See, the finer you get, even though you're getting more yardage, you're not getting as much density on the bobbin, if that makes sense. So, yeah. All good. All good. So, I will be back. I will be back after my dinner. I need something to eat. I'm getting cranky. You can feel it. Mm. I get hungry, me. Mm. <laughs> I need food. Food. Food and coffee. So, I love you all so much. I will be back soon. No matter where you are in the world, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening or night time, I want you to do what you love doing. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye, beautifuls.